So the year that I graduated Clawson High School in 2002, I was voted class skipper, <laughs> which is kind of the opposite of showing up, right? Um, my school liaison officer actually called my boyfriend and I two and a half cents and two and a half cents because we would jam nickels into the doors so that we could gain re-entry to the school after we had finished doing whatever we were doing when we were skipping. So, um, And there are many reasons why children do things like skip school. And, you know, Looking back, I had undiagnosed ADD, depression, anxiety. Um, my childhood was kind of unstable, but really, I think it was just this rebellious spirit that I had. I was always questioning things, and I continue to do that to this day. Um, I always wanted to be independent, too. So one of these uh, days that I was skipping school, I was actually skipping gym class, and the date was September 11th, 2001. I was smoking a cigarette in my car in the school parking lot, and I turned on the radio, and I started hearing live coverage of the terrorist attacks on the Twin Towers. And I remember sitting there in disbelief, and I also remember that this was the first time in my quasi-adult life that I felt like something, a part of something that was bigger than myself. Um, I could feel the fear and the pain of all these other Americans that were suffering, you know, in that moment. But what I didn't realize was that both my rebellious spirits and the empathy that I felt that day would be the driving force behind me starting to show up. So later that year, I was a senior in high school, later that year my mother approached me and asked me uh, if I would consider joining the U.S. Navy. I'm not sure that she connected the dots between the largest terrorist attack on U.S. soil and her asking her daughter to join the armed forces, but it was definitely in the back of my mind. Um, I saw this as a part, a way for me to be part of the solution, you know, to be that, um, fulfill that empathy. Um, but I also saw it as a way to, you know, be rebellious. Like, you guys didn't think I could do this, but I'm going to do this, you know. Uh, so yeah, so. I showed up at the recruiter's office, I took my ASFAB, and then I was swept up into um, the machine that is Uncle Sam. And this would be the experience that would show me that just showing up could garner me great opportunity and success. I can't stress enough by how merely showing up, just putting yourself in a room, um, can bring you opportunities that you never thought you would be able to achieve. And, um, yeah, I think that once you're there, once you're in that space, um, it's really important to lean in to your authenticity, who you are, what brought you to that room. And then I think after that, you know, you'll see success. Um, believing in yourself and thinking and knowing that you're enough will really be the driving force to success. So an example of this for me was running for public office um, and further winning the seat. You know, I didn't think that um, I would ever be in that type of environment, but I leaned in to what I knew I was and I put myself in that position, position and um, I ended up winning. And so another part of why I ran for public office was the presidential election in 2016. And I'm not gonna go into it, all the politics involved, but I'll just say my candidate did not win. And further, I was upset about what this candidate winning, I thought, what it meant for our country. And so I was pretty, um, you know, disenfranchised, but I ended up, uh, you know, talking with some friends, we felt the same way, and then we started to go online, and we started to learn about the Women's March. And at this point, it was just this kind of amorphous gathering, a possibility of a gathering. Um, but as I researched more, I saw women were showing up. You know, women were showing up online, in kitchens of other women, in local public libraries, and then they were leaning in. You know, they were um, 
giving their gift of organization or their gift of knitting, like those uh, pussy hats that we all know about. Um, you know, that was really just a show of solidarity and women giving their um, traits to other women. And so um, along with millions of other women, uh, we leaned in, we showed up, uh, we went to Washington DC, and then um, it was a huge success, you know? And so that equation of leaning in, showing up, and leaning in again, uh, that just rang true. And so on our way back from Washington DC, my um, friends and I said, how are we gonna keep this momentum going? And for instance, one of my friends, Kathy, said, I'm gonna engage young voters and try to get them to go out to the polls. And I said, okay, my mantra is gonna be, first we march and then we run. Um, this was not an easy decision for me because I have three kids and I have a full-time job. But, um, you know, that passion really kind of rang true. And so I did it. You know, I showed up, I got myself on the ballot. I showed up to Chamber of Commerce meetings and learned about our local businesses. I showed up to uh, people's doorsteps and uh, learned about what they cared about. And, you know, what I learned was that by believing in myself um, and doing what I was called to do, I could gain success. And so did 4,025 other residents in the city of Rochester Hills. Um, you know, looking back at this, I just can't emphasize enough, you know, that the success that we saw from, for instance, the Women's March, this recent election, you saw many, many hundreds, of, like record-breaking numbers of women running for office, becoming successful. And I'm so hopeful and excited to see their gifts coming out and um, helping our country. And I believe that's what we're gonna see. So I guess my message today is don't be a class skipper. <laughs> Sh suit up, show up, lean in, and believe that you're good enough because what you are is exactly what this world needs. Thank you. Thank you.